Let's do this. Quasar's time component. Let's come in here and say Q-time. And then we're going to model the time behind the scenes. And let's just call that time. And then I can come in here and say const time is equal to a ref. We'll import ref. And yeah, we'll set it to empty by default. There we go. Here's our component ready for us to start clicking around. And it works. Let's come down here and have a pre-tag just to check that is being modeled correctly. And we'll whack the time in there. And there we go. Once we've selected a time, it shows up. So we can get rid of that now and trust that it's working and have a look at what else we can do. We can change it to landscape. This is usually a nicer experience, I think, on a desktop device. So what you could do is add a colon here and say, it's only going to be landscape if it's on a larger device. So for example, hey Quasar, if the screen is greater than extra small, then I want this to be landscape. So if it's not greater than extra small, we'll get it in the normal mode. So there we go, I saved that. Let's make this smaller. And then eventually it switches modes there. So that's really cool. Nice for responsive applications. What else can we do? We can change this to format 24 hours, which means it's going to have 24 hour format. Notice that we've got these inner numbers as well, leading all the way up to 24. Well, 23, because 23 and then, you know, 59 is going to be the last number we have available, not 24, but you get the idea. So we got that. We've also got now dash BTN, which is going to give us a now button, which sets the time to right now. So it's 2.51 for me right now. I'm currently on holidays, so I'm able to record videos during the day, which is kind of cool. Another thing we have is disable, save it. Now we can't click on anything or change anything. And the partner of that is read only which is a way of saying, hey, we're just displaying a time. You can't actually change the values here. It's display only. That's what I think of when I think read only. I think display only. And when I think disable, I think you're either not allowed to change this value or you can't change it yet because something else inside of the form needs to be set. Anyway, moving on. We've also got a mask. So we can say mask here and set it equal to something like hour, hour, and then minute, minute, which I'm pretty sure is what it is by default. So how about we come down here and throw a pre-tag in there again, and then we can say time, and there we go. It's hour, hour, minute, minute, and you could potentially just do the minutes. And now it's only going to show the minutes. So you get the idea, you've got total control over the mask. And if you want to see what's available here for your masks, then go to the Quasar docs and look up format for display. If you put that into the search, it's going to take you to part of the docs that shows you all of your mask possibilities. And there are a lot of them. And one of the cool things about this is your mask can actually have a date in it as well, which allows us to use Quasar's time component with the date component. This is really cool. Check it out. Uh, I might keep that in there and then we'll say here Q-date. And usually you pick the date first. So let's put that above the time. There we go. And now we can just do a v-model for the time and make sure that they both have the same mask. So how about something like this? The mask is equal to day, day, month, month, year, 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 year. And then hours, hours, minutes, minutes, seconds, seconds. And I'm just going to copy that and we'll use the exact same mask for both of these. Save it. And now I can say, that's the date. So the date shows up there. And now we can also set the time as well. So check this out. We select a time and now we've got the date and the time showing up. This is really powerful. Quasar's essentially made it ridiculously, ridiculously easy to set a very specific date and time using these components in tandem. And I go on and on about this all the time because it's so wonderful that the mask is the exact same property here. Quasar's done an amazing job of making everything really consistent for us. Since the API is so close together, you've, we've essentially written the same code here and just swapped out the component. So I really love that about Quasar. All right, let's get rid of that. Let's get rid of the mask and see what else we can do. We can change the color. So let's just say primary. Oh, primary is gonna be the color anyway. So let's use our accent color. I don't use accent very often. Which, by the way, is a good thing. You shouldn't have too many accented colors over your page. That should just be for things that you really want to draw the user's attention to. Anywho, moving on, we've also got text dash color here. How about we set this equal to secondary? Use our secondary color. 
and we'll set the text color equal to black. But it could be anything, it could be green, it could be white, it can be anything. So we'll get rid of those two and have a look at what else we can do. We can make it flat. So notice we have the shadow by default. By saying flat, we now remove the shadow. And then we can also say bordered, which is going to bring a border back in. And this is a great way to essentially get rid of the quote unquote material design feel. If you make something flat and bordered, you no longer have that shadow sitting underneath there. So this is a common thing I'll do if I feel like everything's getting a bit too shadowy in my application. And notice that we've got curved borders. We can get rid of those by saying squared. Save it. Oh, it's not squared, it's square. There we go. And now we've got rigid edges for our component. Okay, what else can we do? Oh, this one's awesome. So you can say with dash seconds, I'll show that first, which means that you can set the hour, you can set the minute, and you can set the seconds so we can get a little bit more specific. But check this out. I can now say hour dash options and then send in an array there and say only allow these hours like one, two, three, four, five, six, for example. And now I can only select one through to six. The others are grayed out. So if I try and select these, it's just going to sort of jump to the closest point. How cool is that? It is so handy to be able to constrain things in this way. So if you can imagine you've got some sort of scheduling application and you only want to allow the user to select hours that are available for the person that they're trying to like book an appointment for. This is where you might use hour options. And of course, we've also got minute options and we've got second options as well, second options. So here I can now say, maybe you can only choose it within the 30 minute mark, or more realistically, it's probably like 15, 30, and then 45. And I probably wouldn't even have seconds most of the time for the applications I build, but you might wanna have second options. And then you can you know, choose a 15 minute increment here, let's say 30. And then let's just say you can only choose it by the 30 seconds. Now you're probably thinking, oh my goodness, Luke, does it get any better than this? And the answer is yes, it does. I can come in here and say options and pass through a function. So now we can say hour, minute, second as the parameters we receive there and do whatever we want to decide on what's going to be shown as the options here. So I can say, for example, only if the hour is less than or equal to six. And there we go, it automatically filters it for us. So you could do like some super specific stuff here using this options menu. You could grab some data from the back end, find out when somebody is available, and then say, hey, I'm only going to let you choose within these options. And by the way, the date component also has some ridiculously cool functionality around disabling dates. So using the queue time component with the date component and all of these constraints available to you, you could really quite easily create an application where you can only book someone at specific times of the day and have a really nice clean AI for that. Did I just say AI? I meant UI for that. <laughs> you get the idea. All right, let's play with this a little bit more. Closing that out. Now imagine using this inside of a queue input component. This is a really common pattern that you'll see. Q dash input. And imagine that this input on the right side has got an icon that then allows you to select the time. I'll show you what I mean. This is probably better just with an example. We can now model on this input the time. So let's save that. And notice that when I select a time, it's also going to show up in the input. And notice we have 40 here. If I change this to 45, it's now going to show to 45. So we can really easily model these two together. Now what we can do is come in here to the queue input and we can append to the end of this input an icon. So queue, well, this will have to be a template. And then we'll say, hashtag append, and then a Q dash icon. And then what I want to do is make it so that when you click on the time icon on the input, it then shows this time selector. So now let's come in here and give it a name. And I happen to know that there is one called access underscore time. I think that's what it is. Yeah, there we go. So now we've got the icon and we can add a class here and then set cursor pointer there we go, so that we know that it's clickable. We get that cursor pointer. That's a really cool, handy class available to us with Quasar. And now let's put inside of this icon 
a pop-up proxy. Now, pop-up proxy basically allows you to say, hey, when you click the thing I'm inside of, which in this case is the icon, when you click on that thing, I'm going to show a pop-up. Q-pop-up-proxy. And then I could just throw the time directly inside of here. Check this out. Whack it in that pop-up proxy, save it. How cool is that? Now we've got a button where we can select the time and we've got the choice. Let me just get rid of this pre-tag. And we've got the choice of selecting it via this time UI component or by entering it manually. And they all like fit nicely together. So let's say 05 and then 05, so 505. I can now click on here and 505 is also modeled inside of this component. So they play really nice together. And we can switch between AM and PM and everything just works. Really cool stuff. Now, one other thing I'll do is say cover here. Yeah, just so it covers that component. I think this just looks a bit nicer. And I also wanna have a button at the bottom here for closing out the dialogue. Because currently it's not really obvious how you close this. You kind of have to just sort of click outside of it and that's not a very nice UI experience. So let's come in here and use the default slot for queue time. So I just say default here. Notice that it basically just takes up this space in here. And now what I can do is wrap that in a div, control shift P, wrap, type in the word div. And then I can say class is equal to row and then justify dash end is going to then push this to the end of the row. There we go. So it's at the right side. I think it makes more sense on the right side than on the left side. And now I can say Q dash button. Let's make it flat. Let's give it a label equal to close. And we can now say the dash close dash pop-up. This is really handy. This will basically find the closest pop-up that this button is currently in and close it. So save it, it means that we don't have to write any JavaScript in order to make this work. We just throw that attribute directly onto the Q button. All right, now we can open this and easily close it by pressing that button. How cool is that? Now I can just select a time and then press close. Easy peasy. So the last thing I wanna show you is using this inside of a native form. So I'm gonna get rid of all of that, Save it and let's get rid of everything on the outside so we only end up with the queue time component inside of our page. There we go. So let's grab all that, Control Shift P, W R A P to wrap that. And we're going to wrap it inside of a queue dash form component. And next we need a button to submit the form. Q dash button to make sure it submits. We'll say the type is equal to submit. This is like native HTML stuff now, setting that type equal to submit. And let's give it a label equal to submit. And there we go. So this is inside of a form and we've got our submit button. And how about we set this to a column? I think that'll look a bit better. Oh, hang on, that's not gonna work. I'm gonna have to say, this is a column. Yeah, so we get that submit button at the bottom. Hang on, this is gonna do my head in. I also wanna say class is equal to Q dash margin top medium to separate them a bit, <laughs> which totally doesn't matter for this video, but anyway. Next, if we want to submit this, we need to make sure that the queue time is a name. So, oh, let me get rid of that. That's from something I did earlier. Now, if I try and submit this form, we get the question mark so we can tell it was submitted, but no data was submitted. In order to make sure we actually submit data, we have to say the name is equal to, and we can set that to whatever we like. So for example, time. And now let's select a time, submit the form, and there we go, that data is now being submitted to the page. So that's good to know. This is how you use it in a native form component. So that's about it for this video. Love this component, especially in tandem with the queue date component. Hope you enjoyed this as much as I enjoyed making it for you. And I'll see you in a future video where we'll explore another Quasar component. Bye for now.